This man I'm sitting here with, soon to become legendary status, label mates with Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson, Mary Wells. I mean, the list goes on. Junior Walker and the All-Stars. I'm sitting here with my man, L. DeBarge. Hey, how you doing, L? Thanks for showing up. Hey, man, for a lot of people who don't know about the L. DeBarge family, the DeBarge family, tell me where exactly the DeBarge family are from. Well, we from Detroit, Michigan. We started off um, when we were very little. I remember my mother taking us all down. Uh, I think it was about five, six years old, taking us down to a local radio station every Sunday, singing on the radio a cappella. Uh -huh. And that's how we made our money. That's how we would get Christmas gifts and, you know, birthday gifts and things like that. We have a little couple we'd be singing way back in Detroit, okay. Michigan. So. And we sing in church after that every Sunday. So that's how we that's how we started off with the Barge family. Is, is, would you say that would that was the way it started off with the Barge family in entertainment or how did it start out in the big entertainment world? Well, music industry. From a business standpoint, my brother Bobby, who was the lead singer of Switch, he, um, his concept was DeBarge. He wanted to um, start the family group, but he had to uh, sort of uh, do it his own way at first. He had a couple of uh, friends that he grew up with, and they formed the group Switch. And he'd always promised that he was going to come back and get his little brothers and uh, yeah. And uh, teach us the ropes under the name DeBarge. She taught me everything I know. I was the lead singer, the folk point, and uh, Bobby DeBarge switch started us off. And it just yeah. Jermaine Jackson. That's how DeBarge got their start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you don't know enough about Switch, they had songs like I Call Your Name, They'll Never Be. I mean, the list goes on. They had uh, about six or seven albums on Motown Records. But uh, man, I mean, tell me what type of influence Bobby had in your career, because we all know he was one of the, probably one of the greatest singers of our time. But uh, oh. tell me what type of influence he had on your career, especially. Bobby had a tremendous, impeccable influence on my, on my life, period. Uh, my life consists of career, my life consists of uh, emotion, my life consists of ups and downs and failures and victories. And uh, Bobby played an important part in every aspect of my life. He, he critiqued me as an entertainer, as a songwriter. He made sure that I was always at my best. He never let me settle for less. So I owe a lot to him. All right. And also there was a song called The Secret Garden, which you worked with Quincy Jones, Barry White. Tell me what that experience is like, working with those legends. Well, Quincy Jones had called me up. I was very shocked. I was in Michigan at the time. Uh, it was in the wintertime. He called me up and uh, I was back in Michigan spending time with my mama. Hey, mom. Hey. Quincy Jones called me and said, hey, Al, I want you to come out here and sing this tune I got. It's called Secret Garden. I'm not finished writing it. Uh, I'd like for you to uh, finish writing it with me in Rob Temple. I just couldn't believe what I was hearing because uh, I've always respected him. You know what a genius he is. Oh, yes, yeah, most definitely. And um, we got together and we thought that we had some magic we could put together. And uh, I wrote my verse and Barry White's verse. And, you know, you know, it came out. Right. Rod Templeton, he was also the leader of uh, Heat Wave. Heat Wave, exactly. Had all yeah. those hits with Heat Wave. Yeah, 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 I know my man. Also oh, wrote yeah, the song yeah. Rock With You for oh, Michael yeah, Rock Jackson. With you for Michael Jackson. Uh, 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 off Patty. the wall, too. Yeah, he did that so Patty LaBelle. Patty and, Austin. And, um, Patty Austin. That's right. Patty Austin. James Ingram. That's right. That's Always right. get a mixed up. Patty LaBelle. Uh, Patty, that Patty that big hit they had. Uh, Baby Come To Me. That's it. That's right. That's yeah. it. You know him. Yeah, he was, uh, he was uh, him and Saeed Garrett, myself, and Quincy Jones. We were at Secret Garden. Oh, man. That was, I mean, that must have did great for you. I mean, because everybody yeah, knew it. Yeah. It, it was a good idea. Quincy's, uh, Quincy's very smart. He, he seems to know what people want at the right time. And uh, the, the whole concept of the song was, was, was really great. You know, because every, every 
love has a spirit. Right. You know, and um, the whole garden thing is just a play on words, but you know what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about now. You know, and as a matter of fact, you know, I want to talk about more, a little bit more about your family because uh, tell me how many brothers and sisters you have in the DeBarge family because I know there's a lot of you, right? There's like 10 of you? Right? Oh, yeah. There's, uh... Can you name them all? I mean, we're going to put you oh, on the spot, right? Goodness. You got about eight uh, brothers, right? It's about 12 kids. Let me see this. There's Marty, Bunny, Bunny, Bobby, Tommy, Randy, Deidre, uh, <laughs> the twins, Marty, Ellis, myself, James, Chico, right. Daryl, Carol, uh, Sean. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's enough for me right there. I mean, that's. that's you got five million nephews and nieces. Yeah. There's a whole lot of debauches running around. You know, and, and I gotta say right now, I mean, when I was growing up back in 79, 78, Switch was a big part of my life. But you know, in concert, you perform the songs, the hits of Switch. I mean, what's that like for you up on stage? I mean, is that a tribute? Is that a big thrill for you to be, you know, singing songs that your brother Bobby sang, you know? Because it basically, we're not gonna hear the Switch sound like that anymore. I mean, you know, I don't know if a lot of people uh, know this, but Bobby DeBarge, he was, of course, the leader of Switch. He passed away last year. And of course, a lot of us will miss him. He is one of the best singers, legendary singers of our time, and will be, and you'll probably acknowledge that as time goes on. But tell me about that, man. I mean, doing that up on stage, because I gotta admit, I like it. I love hearing it, man. Well, Bobby DeBarge was uh, more important than he himself even thought he was too. When he when Bobby passed away, I know for a fact that he he didn't know how how special he was to the world. Uh, we can never really get him to recognize how much he meant uh, to the world. He was just he just loved what he was doing, but for some reason he never thought that uh, he was really appreciated. And he was so much appreciated. Oh, most definitely. Um. um it's just an honor for me to do the switch songs on stage. It's kind of hard right. sometimes because I get a little emotional. I know it touches you, right? You know, I know you saw me get oh, emotional yeah. tonight, but uh, I have to do it because he's a part of my musical heritage. And he's my own flesh and blood, and he he meant a lot to a lot of people out there. And it would be an insult uh, to to people, to the whole music industry, for us to do a concert and not commemorate him. Exactly. So he means a lot to a lot of people. So you guys had a big uh, thing happening back in your hometown, right? Where you guys commemorated him yeah, uh, as we, an anniversary. We did a tribute right? concert for Bobby. Um, um, almost a year after he died, we went back to Michigan, and we had so many people on stage. We had like 900 bass wow. players, you know, and did all the songs just this way? 900 drummers and right. keyboard players because everybody that Bobby grew up with was from Michigan. And Everybody wanted to play. The cousins that, that played, and, and you know, the uh, people he grew up with in school that played with him in his little uh, high school bands. Everybody was right. on stage, Everybody including enjoyed. the family. We just had like choirs of voices. It was it was a great tribute to him. You know, Al, I understand that there's some material from Bobby that was never released, right? Never released. Stuff yeah. That that you know the public has never heard. Will we yeah. ever hear? Yeah, that? we got we got to get it. We got to get it. Um, it's in in Motown's archives. Um, you know, it gets political. It gets hard to get, but right. I tell you what, I know it. He showed them to me. If I can't get the tapes, I'll do them again myself. Uh huh. Most definitely. You know, I want to name a few names, and you tell me a little bit about them and what they mean to you. Chico DeBarge. What is he doing? And a little bit about him now. Chico DeBarge. Uh, right now, he's uh, signed to MCA Universal Record Company. Uh, working on an album right now. It should be out pretty soon. Had that big hit called Talk To Me Talk Baby. Talk To Me Baby, yeah. Oh, man. Chico's uh, ready. Chico's, uh, he's real young. He's real in tune with uh, what's going on out there today. You know, it's, it's a new thing out there. My little, he's one of my little brothers. He keeps me. He says, hell, look here, man. You got to flip that beat like this. You know, <laughs> right, <laughs> so, okay. Right. And also Marvin Gaye. I mean, our Marvin Gaye, I know, is a big influence on your life and, and, and my life. I mean, we knew uh, albums like uh, Let's Get It On, uh, also I Want You, I mean, various albums. What type of influence did Marvin Gaye have on your career, your life, and your singing style? A very great influence. Marvin Gaye was like uh, one of my mentors, one of my main teachers. Um, I have what I call a school of music. Um, a lot of teachers, Ozzy Brothers, oh, Sly yeah. Stone, George Clinton, James Brown, uh, even Gospel, Andre Crouch, oh, The yeah. Hawkins, um, uh, my brother Bobby, uh, my uncle James, 
Marvin and my school of teachers. Marvin is like uh, the dean. Right. You know what I mean? It's like he's... <laughs> what I admire most about him is his, his ability to to write about whatever he's going through. It takes a lot of strength for a man to be vulnerable as he allows himself to be musical. And, you know, it takes a lot of strength. The, that's, the that's not a way. It, he allows himself to be vulnerable through his music. And he'll just talk about whatever he's going through. And he'll just show you his vulnerabilities and his music. And that reaches people. People love to feel that. He, he becomes our hero. You know? And I learned a lot from that. I learned from Marvin that uh, it's, this is a ministry. And you have to touch people. This is not about trying to flatter anybody. People are hungry. Their souls are hungry. They, you know, they want somebody to, to help them and speak the same of their heart. So that's why Marvin was, was such a great mentor. Hear my dear. Do you remember that album? Oh, hear my dear. Oh. <laughs> hear so my you know dear. You got to get that Marvin Gaye oh, album. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, he made that one strictly for his wife. He talked about the trials, tribulations of his wife, his divorce, the way she controlled him with his kids. I mean, and you mentioned, you know, he talked right about the situation right about that, whatever he was that happened to us, me, you, and everybody else. You know, and also, you did a song, I Want You, with Foreplay, right? Tell me about hooking up with Foreplay and doing that, right? The after the dance song, I Want You. Well, um, Nathan East, the bass player of Foreplay, Nathan has always played on our albums, did the bar jealous from the beginning. So we're very good friends. He called me up and said, "Yo, we're starting this group called Foreplay. We want to do Marvin Gaye's um, After the Dance. Um, we want you to sing it. We know that um, if anybody could do it, you could bring some justice to it. So uh, I said, pull my leg, pull my arm, make me do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He knew how crazy I was about Marvin me. He didn't have to say it twice. I said, man, you know I'll do it. So that's how it came about. And uh, man, I gotta say, man, that's a, a great song. I mean, you do. Are you gonna do anything like that again? Because I know your album <coughs> called, uh, you know, Heart, Mind, and Soul has a strong Marvin influence, right? But I mean, is it, you know? Well, the song Heart, Mind, and Soul. Um, Wawa Watson, who's a guitar player for Marvin Gaye. Um, oh yes. Leon Ware, who co-wrote the whole I Want You with Marvin. Gaye. Oh yeah. Um, <coughs> they helped me co-produce it. What we wanted to do was commemorate. Uh, Marvel, we always want to just keep his memory alive. Uh, that whole album, the Heart Mind Soul album, uh, Babyface and I co produced it. That particular song, um, uh, Marvel Gaze Camp was really responsible for sounding like that. Man, and I guess, Heart Mind and Soul song. The, yeah, the, I mean, I gotta say, and you wear it well. That's the, that's that's one oh, yeah. of the jams, right like there. Brother Chico and I wrote that together. Is that right, yeah. brother Chico? Yeah. And and also, right, uh, Randy's uh, touring with you, right? Yeah, Randy's touring with me. Uh, yeah. Brother, brother, brother Randy. And man, I know you get asked this like many times, man. I know you've been probably asked this a million times. I know, I know it's hard for you to do, man. But just to let everybody know how for real you are and and, and how much your voice sounds and how great it sounds. You think you can do a little acapella for us, man? A little, you know. Look, we got the whole crew over there. You know, we got the whole crew over here. You think you do a little acapella, man, of like something like that? Yeah, everybody uh, here. I like it. Yeah, yeah. We got we got about 500 people in the house there. Yeah. Okay, thank. Quiet on the set. Look at them. They're all out there. Yeah, there, the you go. there you we go. We just had a great show tonight, so we were all excited. What do you want me to do, acapella? Uh, anything, oh, man. It's time. I like it. It's, it's time to go. Here we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's time to get <laughs> Yeah, some little, little something, man. Yeah, is that what you want to hear? I like it. Yeah, or anything. Uh, what's the other ones? Uh... Go ahead, baby. Go ahead. Yeah, take your time. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead, take your time. Which one? Let me see. Um, let me see. All right, what, what's that? The same album? Uh, All This Love. All This Love. There you go. Okay. I have some problems. No one could see the sun. You'll find the answer, baby. Told me to take this chance and learn the ways of love, my baby. All that it has to offer, ooh, baby. All that I have, I give, honey, my all, honey, my all, I give to you, baby. Ooh, baby, ooh. And all this love's waiting for you, my baby, yeah, my darling, and baby, all, oh, baby, 
all my love, darling, is waiting for you. Elder Bards, Elder Bards in the house, soon to become legendary status, so you definitely gotta look out for him. Any albums that he has, anytime he's in performance, remember Kimball's East, Emeryville, wherever he's at, make sure you go check him out. Now, you got any shout outs you wanna give to the Bay Area? Anybody watching? Oh, yeah, yeah, I wanna give a shout out to my man Dave Ferguson out there, one of yeah. the best comedians in town, Pete Escovita and family one. Thanks for the support. <laughs> To all of the San Francisco, Oakland, my West Side homies. Yeah. Yeah, in the Bay Area. We love you. And um, to all those beautiful ladies out there. We can't forget about the ladies. Can't, can't forget about the ladies. We can't forget about And you know who you are. Yeah. yeah. And and your lady too. <laughs> you know who you are. That's right. Hey, I'm G Spot, Elder Bars. We got Rockefeller in the house. We also got Keisha. Too. Want to be back at you once again with yet another interview, so stay tuned. But we gonna keep this party going, baby. Ain't you been sitting down long enough, huh? What I'm really trying to say is, baby. Hot, wait a minute, hold up. What I'm really trying to say, baby. Give me that thing again. Give me that intro again, baby. No, no, no. Come on, come on, baby. I just want you to know what we're doing, yeah. I want you to know what song we're singing, baby. We're talking about, 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 talking about. What we talking about, Shelly, Sherry, Randy. Come on, Jeff, tell them what we talking about. We go, shake, 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 shake my boot, day. Every day, uh, I hardly know my name. 